You've spent a long time spinning your yarn. And now, what is the next step? Your bobbin is full. The next step is to remove the yarn from the bobbin, and we want to get it into a skein, or one big giant loop of yarn. The tool to use this is called a knitty knotty. This is what a knitty knotty looks like, and this is a physical tool that we will use to place the yarn on here and get it off of the bobbin. A knitty knotty is also useful for estimating the yardage of your finished yarn. This first example is a two yard knitty knotty, and this is Kromsky is the brand. You can purchase this online. One nice thing about the purchased ones is, for one, they tell you what the yardage is. Also, they're very attractive looking. It does look like a nice piece of furniture. And it's also easy to slide the yarn off because you'll see that there are grooves on the top of it. Okay, and I wanna show you another example. Now this is a homemade Nitty Naughty that I made out of PVC pipe. And this is what I've been using for the first few years of my spinning. One of the pros of this is that it is less expensive. You can buy this with just simple PVC. You can look on the internet and there are plenty of instructions on how to do this. Also, you can make it large if you want. So this can fit a large amount of yarn, which is really nice because I'll be using the Country Spinner 2 bobbin, which holds a lot of yarn. One of the cons that I don't like about this one is it's difficult to slide the yarn off with these end caps. So the first example is I have a full bobbin of Old English Baby Doll Southdown Fleece. This is from a black weather named Merle. He was featured in one of my other videos. And this is a chunkier yarn. The second example I'll be showing you today is a full bobbin of a Shetland fleece. And this is from Olympia. And she is a Shetland U with a beautiful black color. And I spun this one really thin. So we'll be doing examples of each of those. I'll be doing the PVC homemade Nitty Naughty with the baby doll fleece, and I'll be using the Kromsky Nitty Naughty with Olympia's fleece, the Shetland fleece. The first thing you wanna do is make sure that your spinner is turned off, so power it off. And also looking in the back of the unit, you wanna make sure that the drive band is in the resting position. So remember with this machine, the working position or spinning position is this middle whirl, and the large one is not used. You could do this in the working one, but it will have more tension. And why work harder than you need to and tire yourself out? So I recommend having it in the resting position and it will spin much looser. Next, I wanna go over how to hold the Nitty Naughty. So with my dominant hand, and I'm right-handed, I will grab the Nitty Naughty in the center of the handle. And when you're looking at it, the T should be on top going left to right and the bottom one is perpendicular to that. So this is how you would grip it with your dominant hand. Okay, so the next thing is you're gonna grab the yarn, the end of your yarn. And don't worry, the end of it is usually pretty loose and unraveled, don't worry about that. We're gonna start by holding that in the palm of my hand, while at the same time gripping the middle of the knitty knot here. So I'm just gonna grip right like that. So first we're gonna go up and over that one, then under the next bottom one, up and over the next one under the next one and back to the top. So that's one pass. This is one pass on your Nitty Naughty. So you can see I'm just, I'm holding onto this middle still, but I'm, I'm gonna rotate my wrist a little bit. So let's continue. Under and over, and I'm turning my arm like this. Now I'm turning back, we're going under, over the upper left, 
under the left, over the upper right, under the lower right. So you can see we're starting to make four legs on this nitty knotty. So let's continue. We're going under and over, under and over, under and over. And just watch how I'm rotating my wrist as I'm going along here. Once you get into the rhythm of it, you don't need to think about it. Okay. So let's take a look now. You can see that there's four legs. One, two, three, and four. Oops, slide that over. You can also consider it as a triangle. So whatever direction you're looking at, you're seeing a V or a triangle. I like to consider them as four legs, okay? So you also don't wanna to put too much tension on this. It can make it more difficult to remove it off of the nitty knotty when you have a lot of tension. And this is a mistake that I am very guilty of myself is putting a lot of tension on there. But I don't want it so loose that it's just gonna fall off either. So. I guess I would say medium tension. So we'll just go a few more times and slow and then we're gonna speed it up. So again, under and over, under and over, under and over. And I'm rotating that wrist as I'm going. Now you can see how freely the bobbin is spinning since I have it in the resting position. It, it's not pulling that hard, it's actually pretty, pretty decent. But if you had kept it in that working whirl, it would have more tension and it would be harder to pull. It starts to look kind of pretty as we're moving along here and you're seeing it wrapped onto the nitty knotty. So I'm gonna keep holding this middle in the center of the handle the entire time. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up and continue on and I'll, I will be meeting you back. Now I do recommend it is okay to take a break. As you can see, there is a lot of yardage on this bobbin and this is going to take a while. So if you get tired, you can just set this down and rest your arm for a minute and then go back at it. So we're gonna carry on with this in a faster speed. time. <laughs> so this was a long wrap. You can see how much is on here. So I'm at a stopping point right now where I'm actually going to cut this off. The reason is when I started this bobbin, I was actually spinning a different white baby doll fleece and I was also spinning it at a much larger size and I don't want to mix the two. So I'm going to be cutting that off because I was, as we just measured, Previously, I was spinning this at Aaron, at an Aaron sized. So I wanna keep that consistent. So you can see where it's changing here, sizes. So I'll be cutting it off right here. So I'm still holding on to the middle where I started. I'm just gonna take my scissors and cut that right there. So don't lose your end. 
But normally what you would do is you would completely empty this bobbin. So this is the finished fleece of Merle's fleece. You can just appreciate how much is on there when you look at it up close. Again, you can see the triangles that it makes or the V's. So no matter which direction I'm turning it, you're going to see a V. Okay. So the next step is we, we don't want this to come unraveled. So we've got the first end that I started with and then the second one that I just ended with and we're going to tie these off. So we need four pieces of scrap yarn and we're going to tie each of the four legs individually. It's helpful if you can use some scrap yarn that's a distinct color that's different from this so it doesn't blend in. So I'll just be using some really cheap off-white colored yarn to tie this off. So go ahead and set this down on your table. And you can see that I have some pre-cut. So I'm going to tie you know, a little bit above where I ended the cut. Nothing fancy here. We just, we just don't want it to come unraveled. Okay, so that's one tie. I want to flip over here and I want to get this one secured next so this doesn't come unraveled. If you want to do a square knot, that's fine. If you want to do a bow tie, whatever works, just so it doesn't come undone. So there's the two legs. We need to do the other two so that all four are completed. And it's pretty obvious which one is the scrap yarn because of the color difference. So just flip it over and we need to tie off these two. Okay, so now you can see that all four legs are secured. So now you can safely move this around and not worry about it coming unraveled. I have to say I really like the way that this turned out. Um, the baby doll yarn is a pretty short staple length, typically two inches or less. And so it can be a little bit more challenging, in my opinion, to spin it. Um, usually I would spin this in a size five or six. So I was pretty impressed that I was able to do it in the Aran size this time around. So after we have this skein tied, this is the time where you want to count or calculate the yardage. So we need to count the strands on here and we're going to pick one leg and count the strands. You don't want to be counting all four legs, so just pick one. Now you have two options. You can either count the strands while it's still attached to the nitty knotty and there's tension on it, or you can count the strands after we've pulled it off the nitty knotty and there will be less tension. Now I chose to count this while it was still on the nitty knotty. And I'm gonna rotate this around and show you that um, there is a lot here. So it would be, it is time consuming to count the strands, but it's easy to lose track because there's so much bulk here. So one little trick you can do is take some more of your scrap yarn and kind of tie them off into bundles. So I did bundles of 100. You could do bundles of 20, whatever number works for you. So I counted this off into, or I sectioned it off into bundles of 100. So it was easier to count them and not get them mixed up. So in the end, I ended up having 310 strands total for the one leg. And you need to multiply that by whatever your nitty knotty is. So this is a, approximately a two yard nitty knotty. So in the end, I got 620 yards on here. That's a lot. <laughs> that is a lot. I have to say that I did get a little bit tired. I had to take a break about halfway through to just give my thumb and wrist a little bit of a break. But yeah, kind of hard to believe that we have 620 yards on here. 
So I want to talk about ways to measure your nitty knotty. There's a couple options with that. Now, obviously a purchased one such as this, they tell us that it's two yards. So we already know it's two yards, easy peasy. But for the homemade one, you can, first option is take a string, take a piece of yarn, and do, you know, do one full pass around here as if you were gonna use it. Take that off and then measure that with a tape measure. So that would tell you how many inches one pass is. However, I don't really like that. I don't think it's very accurate because yarn is stretchy. And so depending on how much tension you're putting on here, that could change your measurement. So what I prefer is to just measure with a tape measure from one corner to the next. So remember it's doing a V here. So from here, from this one to this one, I would just measure with a tape measure right in that groove here on the top to this top groove across. And then I'm going to take that measurement and multiply it by four because we have the four legs and that should give you the total inches for one full pass. So that's what I did with my homemade one. Now, technically this is about 2.16 yards. So um, it's slightly over a two yard. But I also want to mention that the nitty knotties are not 100% accurate. So when I'm measuring, you know, I'm measuring on the bare top of the PVC or wood. But obviously as this is getting built up and up higher and higher as the yarn, it's quite a bit taller, you know, than the base of the pipe here. So you got to account for a little bit of miscalculation on the height of this yarn. So that is, and, and I'm also moving a little bit from left to right across the bar as well because there's so much here. So this isn't going to be 100% accurate. You can actually see that the, the PVC pipe here is actually bowing a little bit from the, from the tension and weight of that as well. So small things like that, of course, are going to affect your ultimate number in the end. But we want to have some kind of an estimate for the yarn. We don't want to be playing Russian roulette with our projects, which is something that in the past I'm very guilty of. I have several balls of yarn in my basement where I spun it and I did not count the yardage. And I was just kind of playing Russian roulette on knitting my hats and cowls with it. And it, I was really lucky. I actually never ran out of yarn, but of course you're gonna play Russian roulette if you don't know what your yardage is, right? Real quick, let's review the math. For those of you that don't love math, such as myself, you need to measure one leg of the nitty knotty. My PVC was 19 and a half and multiply that by four because there are four legs total on the nitty knotty. That gave me 78 inches. How many yards is 78 inches? I know that one yard is 36 inches and I have 78 inches. So we need to solve for X. Multiply 78 times one and divide by 36 and x will equal 2.16 yards. Now we do want to round down, you can round that down to two yards. When counting, you count the strands. Merle had 310 strands in which you multiply by your yardage and my nitty knotty is two yards. So that will give me 620 yards for Merle. And with Olympia, she had 423 strands multiplied by the two yard nitty knotty giving me 846 yards. Another factor that I want to discuss is that you can have shrinkage of the yardage after setting the twist. And I'll have another video on wet setting the twist, but you need to factor that in. So between shrinkage from setting the twist, and you can also have bloom of the yarn itself. So the diameter of the yarn may increase, but the length of it may decrease. So factoring in that, plus not wanting to run out when you're working on a project and playing Russian roulette, it's better to round down. So round down your yardage and always estimate lower than what you actually counted on the nitty knotty. So the last step here with the nitty knotty is to take it off of the nitty knotty. So we only need to remove one of the, one of the legs and then the tension will easily slide right off. So, this is the one thing I don't like about the PVC one is it's difficult to pull off with the end caps. So I'm basically gonna look at all four of them and choose which one 
looks the easiest to take off. So I'm going to choose I'm going to choose this one. So we're going to we're going to slide this off up and over this end cap so that this whole section here comes off. So I like to sit down in a chair. It takes a little bit of tension here to do this. Now there's no way I can grab this all in one big bunch and pull it. So I just do it in little sections because that's about all I can handle, <laughs> to be honest. So remember that part where I said, don't put too much tension on your nitty knotty because it's difficult to remove. This is exactly why. So I almost have to roll it a little bit because there's so much tension. to get it up and over that end cap. Honestly, it's easier to just do smaller, you know, a few strands at a time. I'm kind of rolling and lifting it up and over this end cap. So you can see that that's coming off gradually. It's going to take several sections to get it. Again, if you need to take a break, then just take a break because it is, it is a little bit tiring, you know, on your thumbs and wrists. Okay, we're getting down to the last few strands here. There. I took a little effort in it. So now you can just see it just slides right off. So now we're left with a skein, one big old loop here. Now, one thing you'll notice is how it's really kinking up. Don't stress out about this. This is totally normal. This is all the energy in the yarn and it can also be over twist energy. Um, you know, it can be really bad sometimes where it's all kinked up like that if you really over twist your yarn. But this is, this is pretty normal and for a single. Now, if, if we plied the yarn, it would be more balanced and not have quite as much of this energy in it. But this is pretty normal for what it looks like. Okay, I'm excited because we are now going to do my Shetland fleece. Like I said, this was Olympia's fleece. She is one of my black Shetland ewes. And this was spun in the fingerling weight. So I do want to emphasize that although this is the Ashford e-spinner super, super jumbo, you can spin thin yarn on this. Um, I think it's a little bit deceiving that yes, it is made for art yarn, bulky yarn, but it doesn't mean that you can't spin thinner stuff on it. I do have a video where I review this product, but there are orifice reducers that you can slide into the opening here, which allows you to spin it thinner if you'd like. So this is a really great machine for all sizes. So again, we're going to start here by grabbing the end of the yarn. This time I'm going to use my Kromsky. So again, I'm still going to hold it the same way as I did with the PVC in the middle of the handle. The top is the T, the bottom is perpendicular to that. So up and over, under, over, and under. Now with this, there's a little bit of a groove on the nitty knotty versus my PVC one is, you know, straight all the way across. But we will be going, I'll have to go beyond the groove because there's so much yardage here that I'm going to be filling this up beyond the groove. But it's great to start it out on the groove. So you can see the notch there that I'm putting it into. So 
So this is a much thinner yarn. So we're probably going to have more length here. This is one fleece of Olympia's. And I have a second fleece that I did of hers, which I started a third bobbin and I'm working on that one right now. So you can see how nice this is looking on the Kromsky. Again, it's the, the V's with the four legs, very nice looking. It's lighter weight than the PVC one, so it's not as heavy to hold it. That's a bonus. So I am going to continue on here, wrapping this up, and I will meet you back as we get close to the end. So I'm nearing the end of the bobbin here. I've just got a little bit more to go. It is getting extremely full where it's almost going to be slipping off and I'm starting to lose a little bit of tension as well. So it's a good thing I'm almost done. There is a lot of yardage here. So this one we will be emptying all the way off. It's all the same fleece. Okay, so you can see here, this is my leader yarn from when I started spinning. And then we started with the wool at this point here. So I'm ready to tie this off now. I have to say that my right hand, right hand is feeling rather numb right now. <laughs> so this is a great time to stop. Once again, I will be tying all four legs. So let's take a closer look at it now that it's tied. So I was starting to lose tension a little bit on this one because it's so full. This is pretty much the maximum that this thing can hold. But it did not fall off, so that's great. I was getting a little close in some spots. It's pretty heavy. So we will be counting the yardage of this. I may choose to take this one off of the Nitty Knotty and then count the strands, just because the darker colors such as black is a little bit harder to see as you're picking through them versus the lighter colors. So I will be counting these strands and we're gonna take this off the Nitty Knotty. So now we're gonna take this yarn off of the Nitty Knotty. So with the Kromsky, of course it has the grooves and we wanna do not the side with the raised lip, but the smooth side. So we'll start with this one. I'm gonna push down more, but very easy. You can see how quick and easy that one slids right off, slid right off. So that is definitely a bonus over the PVC as it slides off much easier. On the other hand, I had to be very careful while I was winding it to not have it fall off. So here, here is the finished skein of the Shetland fleece. Looks great. Obviously, again, you're going to have some energy with it. It's a single yarn and that over twist energy is going to show up right now. So this one is ready to set the twist. So that completes the process on how to use a Nitty Knotty. The next step in the wool processing will be setting the twist. So be sure to follow my next video when we come back to set the twist.